Chapter 10 Love, D. The Supreme Commandment First Bible Lesson, John chapter 14 verse 21, He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Second Bible Lesson, Matthew chapter 22 verses 37 and 38, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Good in text, 1 John chapter 3 verses 22 and 23, And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments, and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his Son Jesus Christ, and love one another, as he gave us commandment. How do I please God? The text outlined above form the preamble on which I will base my solemn advice to you. So many people are eager to know how to please God. The facts expressed in the three texts shall satisfy their yearnings. The first lesson states expressly as follows, He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. These facts are very clear. They are not visions or dreams. Whether you are circumcised or not, is immaterial, irrelevant and to no effect whatsoever. The material fact which must be given prominence is the idea that you assimilate the injunctions of God and practice sin. You may be a bishop, pope, royal highness, if you do not hearken to the instructions of God, your labor is in vain. If you so wish, erect innumerable cathedrals, donate generously, if you do not practice these injunctions, all your efforts are meaningless. You may wish to fast for five years, abstain from the consumption of meat and fish, and if you neglect, refuse and reject my injunctions, it shall amount to a waste. Also, if you like, you can evangelize in many towns, memorize all the verses in the Bible, but if you do not keep the instructions of God, your labor shall be unrewarded. To buttress this fact, read 1 Corinthians, chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. See below, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity I am become as sounding brass, or a tinkling cymbal, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries, and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, and have not charity, I am nothing. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verses 1 and 2 Consequently, whoever does not assimilate my teachings, and practice sin, shall become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Note that the words of God are likened to a chain, one ring hooks onto the other. If you fulfill one, it is very likely that you will satisfy others. If you fail in one, there is the tendency of failure in all. You can fulfill the commandment, what is his commandment? His commandment is that we should believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he commanded. He who believes in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ is that man who loves his God, with all his heart, and with all his soul, and with all his mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. This same man who fulfills all the facts stated above is that man that loves his neighbor as himself. The scripture has already confirmed the fact that, he that loves God, the same has exercised the love of one another. But whosoever professes to love God but hates his brethren is a liar, 1 John chapter 4 verse 20. How can you proclaim that you love God whom you do not see, but fail to love your brethren who have physical dealings with you? It was only the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ who witnessed most of his miracles. They also testified to the upliftment of his work. No son of Adam present in the world today saw, had or perceived any of Christ's accomplishments. It was these apostles that spread those good news to the entire world. Also, three out of the twelve disciples witnessed the transfiguration, Matthew chapter 17 verses 2 to 5. A voice from heaven proclaimed that, This is my beloved son, hear him. The deity of our Lord Jesus Christ was revealed and confirmed. These three apostles believed. This news was subsequently spread to other apostles who also believed. They also related same to the disciples, and many believed. The combined efforts of the apostles and the disciples of Christ led to the spread of his teachings. Today, I also urge you to believe in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is only the believers who will keep his commandments.
Whoever keeps his commandments is the person who loves him. Our Lord Jesus Christ will reciprocate this love. His Father shall also abide with him. Whatever are his problems, our Lord Jesus Christ will intervene and ameliorate them. Whoever believes in him, he shall grant his heart's desire. His blessings he will pour forth on them. Christianity, the Genesis in Luke chapter 19 verse 40, it was recorded, and he answered and said unto them, I tell you that, if this should hold their peace, the stones will immediately cry out. It is a fact that no one can challenge or contest any given fact, situation, rights, or privileges with God. He manifests in whichever way he deems fit. Take for instance, it was Israel that he chose. He was born and bred there. However, the Romans, their arch enemies, accepted the teachings of Christ and believed. Rome therefore became the cradle of Christianity. The Jews neglected and rejected him. Today none of the Jews, not even one, accepts Christianity. Such are the ways of the Lord. Romans only paid lip service to him. He manifested elsewhere. Oh yes. That is the mystery of God. The process can be elaborated briefly as follows, the Romans believed in him and manifested his glory in their midst. Later, they paid just lip service to him, and he deserted them. Then came the Protestants. King James broke away from the Roman Catholic and founded the Church of England. So the proliferation of churches continued. However, God also continues to manifest himself as he wants. He chooses where to dwell and when. Like now, he has manifested in your midst. You do not believe, you also reject him. However, by the time you realize yourselves, he will be operating elsewhere. Divorcement, the Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read, that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female, and said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Wherefore they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. They say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement, and to put her away? He said unto them, Moses because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives, but from the beginning it was not so. Matthew chapter 19 verses 3 to 8, this abstract must be studied carefully. It is important for all the Orthodox churches to note it. I have noticed a new development in the doctrine of the many churches. They marry in court and divorce at will. I feel they have contravened the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. I call for an immediate change. In some Orthodox churches, the practice of monogamy is upheld. But in a clandestine manner, they tolerate divorce. That is to say, a divorcee is accepted in their midst. In their practice, a divorcee may worship, but is not entitled to partake in the Holy Communion. Many members enjoy this practice. They use it as a cover to operate polygamy. The hypocrisy about this practice is that those divorcees hold prominent posts in these churches. I am dissatisfied with this practice because a lot of people manipulate it. I believe fervently also that the heads of these churches are merely tolerating the situation so as to enjoy the membership and continuous support of these corporates. This abstract carries the message which you must comply with. Destiny you may ponder on why Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit, they ate so that we may multiply. Genesis chapter 3 verse 9, Without their sinfulness, there will be no death. Without death, there would be no life. In John chapter 12, verse 24, this fact is clearly indicated as follows, Verily, verily I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall onto the ground and die, it abideth alone, but if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. John chapter 12 verse 24, from the foregoing, the action of Adam and Eve cannot be qualified as a mistake. Similarly, the fact that the Israelites did not accept and glorify the Messiah should not be condemned. If they did not reject him, there would have been no chance for the Gentiles. Without tribulations and hardship, you would not search for a cure. In a bid to seek deliverance, you will come in contact with many witch doctors, necromancers, herbalists, 
shrines and temples. If God God did not predict the tribulations, sufferings, slavery and bondage of the Israelites for 400 years, how would this have come to pass? God also indicated his intention to punish the Egyptians for whatever role they played in subjecting the Israelites to slavery and bondage. God is, on the one hand the cause, and on the other hand, the effect and remedy to every problem. A local proverb has it that, it is God who causes the injury, and he is the one who provides remedy. To buttress this fact, I will ask the following questions. 1. Who was responsible for the treatments which the Egyptians meted out to the Israelites? 2. Who delivered the Israelites out of Egypt? You will agree with me that God was responsible for these situations. The family of Jacob was a large one. He had 12 children who were all boys. Let us examine closely why all others united only to hate Joseph who was the youngest. Reuben's arrangement was that Joseph should be killed. Judah contested this fact and won. A decision was reached that he should be sold, and the prophet shared amongst them. He was sold into slavery. As was destined, he settled in Potiphar's house. He overcame the temptation to commit adultery with Potiphar's wife. Later, he was falsely accused and imprisoned. From the prison, he was appointed a governor, an exalted position he occupied until a reconciliation was effected between him and his brothers. The question is, who was responsible for all this? It was God. Pharaoh had a dream which only Joseph could interpret. These happenings were symbolic so that the words of God might be fulfilled. There were seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. Pharaoh had taken time to preempt the situation so he had sufficient grain to consume and to dispose of. This attracted the Israelites to Egypt. Subsequently, they settled there. This was the genesis of their slavery. In a nutshell, one can rightly say that all this occurred so that God's glory might manifest. When Joseph extended his invitation to all his brothers, they were very happy, little did they know that the beginning of their sorrow had begun. Nothing is impossible in the sight of God. Some of you wonder that with all the blessings and miracles in brotherhood, only a few people recognize this fact. This happens according to the will of God. You may recall when the royal highnesses came here, they overshadowed all of you. This is an example of what would have happened if the entire world had responded to the call which God extended to them. You also wonder why the whites have not registered in the fold in large numbers. Supposing all the whites assemble here, would they not rob you of all the available opportunities in this kingdom? Everything worketh as arranged by God. Do not disturb yourself any further. Many will not respond to my call. This goes to fulfill the fact as stated below in St. Matthew's Gospel. Matthew chapter 13 verses 14 to 17, And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which said, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive, for this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see, and have not seen them and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. God is the architect of everything. Man cannot effect anything on his own. He cannot alter any situation. You cannot harden your heart as you always say. Pharaoh was heartless. You cannot hearken to the voice of God like Christ. God may decide to harden your heart. He may choose to touch your conscience. Whatever direction he drives you, the glory is his. Christ's mysteries and government after the crucifixion, the garment of our Lord Jesus Christ was divided into four, John chapter 19 verse 23. These four parts of the garment were later given to the four soldiers who were present at his graveside. These four soldiers represented the four cardinal points in the world. He had yet another, quote, garment which did not have straight cuts. The soldiers decided among themselves to cast lots. Whoever won the lot would have the said garment, coat. This event represented the absence of Judas Iscariot. 
You may recall that the apostles cast lots in order to choose who would take his place, Acts chapter 1 verse 26. This further goes to vindicate the fact that leadership need not be duplicated. For sound governance, there must be just one leader. For an example, Cross River State has just one governor, and Nigeria, one president. This does not mean that leadership should be for life. The Shaguris, the Gawans, the Babangidas have to come and go. Consequently, leadership has to be for a determined period after which there must be an election. If this is done it will confirm the significance of that garment which was not divided. This will also bring about the casting of that lot amongst them like what those soldiers did to determine who will inherit his garment. It is said that any city or nation devoid of a prophet is doomed. Prophet here connotes a ruler. The world is plagued with bad leadership. A good leader is not made by elections, for a ruler is born and not made. The office must be occupied by an individual. This goes to confirm the fact that the, quote, garment worn by our Lord Jesus Christ was straight without a sin. The garment that was divided also signifies the proliferation of churches. However, these churches have no single leadership. Yet, they have spread all over the world. I know that a ruler will emerge, the one who will administer unto all the flock. The emergence of Christ in his second advent marks the fulfillment of this purpose. He who rules the wind, death, trees, fishes, and human beings, among others, is here. This king will rule the world with an iron rod. There shall be oneness and peace on earth. The second mystery and the second Christ, a lot of people may wonder why brotherhood of the cross and star should be criticized so much. This is not strange at all, because it was prophesied that, but first must he suffer many things, and be rejected of this generation, Luke chapter 17 verse 25. This also is the actual design of God. Through propaganda, calumny, blackmail and unconstructive criticism, many people began to hear about brotherhood of the cross and star. Their curiosity once evoked, an inquiry commenced, until they responded to the call of God. A lot of those who investigated into activities of this fold became convinced about the truth here. They became converted and got baptized. God allows very many names to be given to his activities in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. Some call it Beelzebub, others call it magic, yet some attribute its success to Mamed, many suggest that it had to do with witchcraft, yet majority attribute it to God. All their opinions as expressed above are valid. This is so because individuals believe in each of the above-mentioned entities. Consequently, they all flock in here only to behold God face to face, transformed and made righteous. For better understanding, see the first lesson below. First Bible lesson, John chapter 14 verse 21, He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Love the message is direct, and the facts are plain. You do not need to undertake a pilgrimage to Jerusalem, by Akpan, 34 Ombo Street, America, Forest, Mountain and Oceans. God is manifested everywhere, especially for those who keep His commandments. I am a jealous God. I demand that you love me with your whole heart and soul, and love your neighbors as yourself. I invite all and sundry who are plagued with various problems to come to me. They should focus on my scarlet garment, the vesture which was dipped in blood, and they shall be delivered. Love is an essential tool, if you are dealing with God, He will require immense love from you. This love has to supersede the love for other things. Draw example from the question our Lord Jesus Christ asked Peter. See John chapter 21 verse 15 So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me more than this? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. You cannot accomplish anything without the supreme and absolute love of God. If you do not love the Lord thy God with your whole heart and your whole soul, you cannot serve him. A millionaire who loves money will not part with even the last farthing for the purpose of serving God. A man who loves a large family will not surrender any of his children for services in the vineyard of God. The man who loves God is prepared to part with his last farthing and even the only child, if that is the will of God. 
it is not sufficient to proclaim that you love God. You have to demonstrate this love. You have to be conscious of same at all times. The love has to be ultimate, absolute, profound and unalloyed. Let us examine the second lesson below. Second Bible lesson, Matthew chapter 22 verses 37 and 38, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Cherishing the brotherhood this is the first and the greatest commandment. You do not strive to possess this love. Rather, you dispense your energy searching for money, husband, wife and children. If you had loved him, he would have manifested in you. Be righteous, for he hearkens only to the pure, and his whole attention is focused on them. Do not lament when you are afflicted or amidst confusion. Speak only but words, for he will hearken to you. Thank him immensely for granting you a relief. He is your fortitude in times of trouble. His protection on you all is great. No man, no angel can dare raise an accusing finger on you. I am always with you. This signifies the presence of the light. The light is easily noticed and commented on. It illuminates and drives away evil. No iota of evil can penetrate your territories. This is because you have faith in me. I manifest in you a lot. That is why you raise the dead as if it were child's play. The love of God is profound and there is no limit to his mercies. Consequently, you also defend with all your might, your stance about brotherhood of the cross and star. Take for instance, the fact that, you are invited to a place, where you are supposed to negotiate business which will yield a profit of several millions of naira. If after negotiation with them, they realize your identity as a brotherhood and make jest and ill comments about the Holy Father, your reaction shall be to avoid them. You will abandon and refuse to conclude the business. You will feel insulted. Yes, that is why they are surprised that you could cherish brotherhood so much. See once again, the golden text below. Golden text, 1 John chapter 3 verses 22 and 23, And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments, and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his Son Jesus Christ, and love one another, as he gave us commandment. You are not alone you may be in the midst of friends, and spiritually, the Father comes in. You will quickly prostrate in reverence to his spiritual presence. These friends will observe in dismay, and when you explain further what you have noticed, they will doubt you because they do not see him. The final conclusion they will draw is that you are not alone. I will confirm this statement. You walk at all times with the Holy Spirit. So you are not alone. In a bid to sow the seed of discord between me and my members, some folk will claim that the members worship a human being on one hand. On the other hand, they will claim that your father has fulfilled all righteousness, but you members are bad. I disagree with them in its entirety. My members are as holy as the angels. If they are compared with others, I grade them with the score of excellence. May God bless his holy words. Amen. Thank you, Father.